Welcome, welcome, take two. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we, um, we thought we were live, and then we weren't live, so we did it again. So anyway, but I think we're really live this time. <laughs> anyway, thank you for all the behind stuff, because if he wasn't here, I don't know what I would do. So thank you, Brett. Um, we talked last time about the pattern of the month. It's 300, and I think what we were discovering is the that every pattern out there, and I think we all need to kind of take a deep breath. There's no such thing as a perfect pattern. There's no such thing as a perfect garment. The goal is to just simply do tweaks. And when I say tweaks, they really should be little. They shouldn't be major overhauls um, so that we can really take the garment from good to great. That's really the goal. So last time we were here, two weeks ago, what we know is Laura went through the blast process and for whatever reason, and I'm, I'm still not sure why, but I want to figure it out, that kind of drove home and hit home to you so much better than anything else I've done in the past 20 years. <laughs> so I'm extremely grateful for Laura. I'm extremely grateful that she's willing to go through this process. You all, I don't know if you read all the comments, but everybody wants to have a neighbor like Laura. <laughs> so I asked if she would be willing to do a tank top, and the reason a tank top is because there's several things that went through my mind. First off, it has no sleeves, so it's a little easier than what a blouse is. So I felt like since we were right on this page of woven and all the things we were doing, a tank top is a great secret little weapon. When I go to workshops, I'm surprised how many women don't make up a muslin of the tank top because I find them completely indispensable in my wardrobe. I make them up all the time, I make them to to go with a suit, to go with a jacket, to go with jeans. I just make up so many and I'm surprised at how many women say, oh, I don't do tank tops. It's not about your arms. It's not about, it, it's just, it's, it's very useful. They're very, very easy to make. They're very simple to make. They're probably the fastest thing to make. But the fact is that they have to fit just correctly. And you really have to understand the principles of L, C, and D to get this tank top to fit like you need it to. So that's really where I wanted to go. Since, since I had Laura and we were kind of really driving it home, I really wanted to do a tank top. I asked Laura if she would be willing to, and of course she's just extremely willing. So I wanna say thank you to Laura. And it's L-O-R-A, just everybody so they know. <laughs> Not that you spelled it incorrectly, you didn't know, but it is just her name is spelled L-O-R-A. As long as we're putting it all over everything and we're thanking her, at least let's <laughs> spell it correctly. L-O-R-A, Laura. <laughs> okay, um, I wanna just take you through the process what we did and we're going to try to remember Laura always makes notes we're going to try to remember the process as best we can we only met once or twice once once, once. we only met once mm -hmm. you never saw the second muscle oh she's right oh she's right we I only called met you. one time I telephoned you, guys. you told you it was okay oh that's right we only met one time and the reason I want to bring this up is I want you to understand number one that you can do this you're the Laura. And number two, it's simple. So many times over the years, people said to me, oh, I don't want to make a muslin. I don't want to make a muslin. Yes, you do. You want to make a muslin because what a muslin will do is it's going to give you confidence and it's going to clear, clarify all of your learning on the muslin. And you're not going to be afraid. And then once you have it done, bam, you're ready to tackle the world. Is that fair? And then we'll show you some variations. Okay, are we good? Do we have any questions? Did anybody, burning questions? Anybody needs answered? Could be sold, could be settled. Yeah. Okay. And they love your top. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I do too. It's so comfortable. <laughs> it's ridiculous how comfortable it is. Okay, um, you ready? Ready. Okay. So I'm going to let Laura tell you what she did. The, she's working with pattern number 500. Right. And what she did to get to where she called me and said, okay, I've got the muslin ready, and she's coming over. And uh, actually, what the best thing for me was, uh, after last week, was I knew two or three things to do to the pattern before I ever even started in on the muslin. So I took my pattern, and from last week we knew that the, the bust line had to be lowered, in my case, 
three quarters of an inch. But she didn't do that automatically. No. She made a comparison of one pattern to another. And you put the base of the neck, Right. you line those up and you line up center front and then you can see where the dart was. Exactly. And of course, I had to, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to lower it the, the same three quarters of an inch that I lowered it last time. So that's my first and probably my most major adjustment because in the end, I discovered there are very, very few tweaks. The tweaks are minor that you have to make once you have your baseline and you know and you have the confidence to go into another pattern. Uh, that qualifies as the under uh, number 1000 and is a woven that you can substitute, correct? Yes, and I do think a lot of it is confidence, you guys. I think Absolutely. that's the whole goal of what we're trying to get you to. So keep in mind, before she even made the base muslin, I'm always telling you guys, if you come to workshops or whatever, don't make any changes to the muslin. But she was in a different category. She'd already done this. Now she should start to kind of make comparisons and see what's different about these two patterns and try to try to see what you think the differences are so she did that mm -hmm. she did lower the dart because she saw that it was going to be too high and then go ahead we uh, made, she made the first muslin and that's where we started the draping process right and from my previous um uh, tweakings of the pattern I did discover also that I because the waistline the floating waistline did not exactly fall where I needed it. I did take out a quarter of an inch folded, though there'd be a half an inch, uh, around my waistline in the um, tissue. And I knew better than to bring um, <laughs> my Swedish drawing paper over here. So I did all of this in tissue. So I hope that it shows up as, as clearly as it, as it should. But the second tweak, can I talk about this way back? Yes. You can, well, no, 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 not, not yet. yet. Not okay. yet, not yet. Okay. Okay, so she's learned things. Okay, is it fair to say maybe sure. you didn't understand before? Absolutely, I didn't understand. So, and also we're trying to kind of clarify what a sway back is, what it looks like. So once we pin these changes, we made the changes onto the tissue. Mm -hmm. That's because that's what her preference was. Remember I've said, you have two options. You can stitch the changes and use the muslin as your pattern, or you can make the changes back. Her preference was to go back to the tissue. Mm -hmm. That's where her, she felt like she was learning the most to go back to the tissue. So we went back to the tissue and we changed the tissue. Right, because I could see it in more or less black and white, or in my case, when I make a change, I do it in blue. And purple. So, and and red, purple and, and red, pink. but at least I can remember my code sometimes. But the sway back to me, which I was never aware that I had on my uh, right side, is the second to me, the most important adjustment or tweak that I have to make on the pattern, which led to my question, well, okay, that throws the center back off grain. Shh, shh, okay, wait. can't talk. Sorry, no, no, mm -hmm. no, no, you can talk all you want. But <laughs> I don't want her to talk about that yet because okay. I want you all to see it and see what it looks like. And so I, I, we took all the pins out of the muslin. Right. So it was back to where it was when she had only lowered the bust dart. And I want you to just for a second talk about how you chose the size you did, if you don't mind. The bus star? Um, no, just the whole size. How did you choose to start oh, with? Oh, now this this uh, yeah. was a problem for me. On the pattern back, there is no extra large as there were in the two blouses. Oh, I forgot that paper. Yeah. Whoops. No, that's okay. No, I remember four years. No, but I oh. wanted to show them. Here, I okay. can show them on this. Okay. But there was no extra large. It only went one through four and then switched from 5W to 8W. Well, I looked at the 5W because it actually, I looked at the 5 and the 6W, and it was strange to me because the 5W has a, um, the, the bus line measurement changed of uh, what, over an inch? It did. It did, you guys. And so, so I told her not to do a 5W. Right. I said do a 5. And I think she looked at me like I was going crazy. And we were on the phone, so I just showed it to the phone. Yeah, but I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like emails. I can tell your response before I get them back. Um, so I wanted to show you tonight because what I learned is Laura didn't have a clear understanding of what I was saying. Exactly. And I want to make sure that you do. There is a size five that fits, it's not a big percent, mm. but it definitely there are times when you out there will need a five. 
We well, cannot put one more tissue in that envelope. It just won't. There's just too many pieces in the envelopes now. So I want you to be aware of how to do this. It's very simple. You can do it right on the tissue. And you know what she said? Simple. Grade it up. I and said, I said grade uh -huh, it up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Not how. Okay, so I want to show you how to do this. And I'm going to need some help probably, Brett, just so that they can actually see it. You're going to take a straight edge. All of your pattern sizes are on there. And the beauty of having several pattern sizes on a pattern is so that you can see it and be able to go up. So what I'm going to do is take, I wonder if I, I hope you all can see this. But you're going to look at all the pattern sizes. You're going to take a straight edge and go right through the angle of the pattern sizes and bam, draw a straight line. So what that does now is there's an increment between 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and, the, and your, your diagonal line continues. So what you're going to do is do whatever the 3 did to the 4, you're going to do that to a 5. Mm -hmm. you get that? Right. Do you think you guys get that? See, there's a diagonal line. You can see it picks up every corner there. Now, for the underarm, I'm going to do it there, and then I'll show you after I do it. Again, you place there on every on every size when when it's graded those four sizes five sizes seven sizes how many sizes there are will all follow a straight line and then you can see once they do once I connect them with that straight line then I just take the difference between the three and the four and I go back out that much on the straight line I have to use that straight line because it lowers the armhole it changes the shoulder it does all of that. It will grade to your larger size. So that was a learning lesson for me. Okay, so there's been many times, I'm gonna show you one more time on the sleeve. Grading is not necessary, it's not fitting. So you can see there where those are the points, I'm gonna connect all the points and then I'm gonna go out to the next bigger size. It's almost like in math when we talked about finding the common denominator, that's what you're doing and then that allows you because it will automatic what I noticed that what Laura did is her armhole wasn't correct mm -hmm. because because she just didn't know how to do I it I and mean, that's just really no big deal I just extended the side seam outward. that's right that's exactly that's, right instead of instead the side of, seam she just kept going instead right. of it being graded and when you look at the difference on any of the patterns you have between the one two three four you'll see mm -hmm. that so I will say my top. <laughs> Here you, you go. I, oh, did you take that? No, I didn't. I've I will a lot of things with that. I will I'll take your fabric that. first. I will say that that's something that I've said over and over. Just grade it up a size. Look at the difference three and the four, and then just mm -hmm. take it up one more size. And because I understand how to do that, I just assumed you all know how to do it. No. Is there any questions on that? Because there are people out there who are the who are size five. There's also people out there who are size 9W who need to look at the difference between the 7 and the 8 and grade up one size, grade up two sizes. You can make the patterns as large. There's people out there who need to make them smaller. They're smallest than the smallest size. I'm thinking of Janet off the top of my head in Washington. Janet emailed me. She said, I'm smallest than the smallest size. What do I do? I said, you eat, silly fool. What do you think you do? I mean, that's not something you brag about. People will kill you for less. So she can grade down because... As soon as you figure out the circumference, you grade down, you go up as much as you need to go down, and that's how you do that. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. glad we remembered that, because I didn't. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Okay, so, we, so then she made a five. I made she a five. She made a five. That's what she decided she needed, mm -hmm. because she did actually make the five W. I did. And it was wrong. It's just wrong, because it's not right for her. She's too tall for a W. Do we grade to get the sleeve to go around a wider arm? No. No, that's a really good question. Do you grade to get a sleeve to go around a wider arm? No, you don't want to. Let me just explain. The reason Laura had to make the five was it wasn't already there. If you need a larger sleeve circumference, you pick the larger sleeve. You don't need to grade. It's already there. The only time I want you to grade is when you're, it hasn't been done for you. But as long as we've already done it, mm -hmm. don't reinvent the wheel. Is that fair? Okay. All right, so we made a five. Made she a five. graded it up. Um, 
and there was some arm issues. We've solved those problems. You won't have those problems because you'll grade. You'll grade correctly. And so now we're going to drape it like it is. And she said when she came over, when we first looked at it, you said, do you remember what you said? Uh, yeah, there's something wrong with the back. And <laughs> <laughs> this is the first visit, and I said it was the only visit. And I really do want to emphasize that it just took one tweak, and that's all. Right, but you have to understand the tweak. Is that uh -huh. fair? Now, also with a tank top, because there's no sleeve attached, I cut off the seam allowance. Right. Because I wanted her to visualize it as it would be, rather than um, right. as it... This, this side know, is not cut off yet. This, seam allowance. This and then the instructions were to leave extra seam allowance at the shoulder and extra seam allowance at the side. Those are the two places you're going to change if you're in the right size. And so she did that. One inch in either place. Okay. Both places. All right. So now we start with L. We already know that, oh, sorry, question? Yeah. What if the largest sleeve isn't large enough? Then that's exactly what Laura was doing with the body because she wanted to stay in the regular size. She was not a W size. Then you grade. That's why I say, if it's not done for you, then you have to do it. But with the sizes we have, for most of you, it will be done. But if you are larger than the than the eight, then you'll have to grade. Very easy to do. And if you do it before you cut the tissue, you've got space around the tissue where you can do it right on the tissue and you don't have to add anything on. Is there a difference in the mounts from size to size in grading? There seems to be a greater change between a three and a four than a two. Yes, there is. Yes, definitely. Because that's, a, that's my grade decision. That's mm -hmm. when I decided how they were going to grade, there, the I decided those differences. You don't need to worry about that. You don't even need to worry about why. If you're going up one size, you should look at the smallest size and go up that same increment. Okay? All right. Okay. Now, where were we? We are, we're we're draping. Finished, we are draping. We're draping. We finished so we're going to drape the tank top. Right. So we're on L is what we're on. Exactly. And L is from is length. It's from the neck to the bust. We already know that's right. I mean, we can double check it again because she measured it against the previous pattern we had draped and mm -hmm. she knew there wasn't, we didn't have to change that this time. We would have. We would have. We would have to do the same thing. Everybody understands just one cut right across the pattern. Here's her pattern. You can see those orange lines that are horizontal. Bam. She added a three-fourths inch. That's three inch. Uh -huh. And then where did you take it back out? I equaled it out down here below the bust start. Here's my... Well, you I mean, I added it here and took it out down here. Okay, and so she added, it a, she added it above the bust and then took it out below the bust. And you all know you don't have to take it out. It just means the top will be longer. You can take it off the bottom if you want. You can add it to the back. It just depends mm -hmm. on how long you want the top to be. That was her decision. Right, and for me, to make it easier... Uh, I number my uh, uh, cuts and my tweaks the same number, like my three-quarters bust increase up here is numbered one, and my three-quarter takeout down here is also numbered one. So I know I've taken out and put in at exactly the right place. And That's the amazing pattern, advice. That's really smart. Oh, well, I don't know if it's because smart. Because you know why? I'll tell you why I think I get is. mixed up. Yeah, and also I'm going to tell you that whenever I'm in a workshop and I'm telling somebody what to do, they get it at the moment, but when they go look at it a month from now, you don't remember. They don't remember what was done for what reason. Right. So that's a really good idea. Well, anyway, so that's one and one idea. to got yeah. it, got it, got it. And then I, and I made a list from last time. <clears throat> excuse me, the tweaks that I need to need to make, and I've got like four. And so my number ones all match up, my number twos all match up, etc. And I number them as I go so I can not lose track of it because I don't always have the time to work on a pattern all at once. I know why you yeah, guys I like know. her. <laughs> <laughs> I just have other things, you know. That's because also I'm her neighbor and she got a new roof this week. Oh, oh, oh please. my Let's, gosh. Hey, listen, you haven't lived until you've taken off a skylight and been invaded by the ant culture. I mean, <laughs> it's been them. a rough week even <laughs> living across the street, okay? Yeah. Um, what do you do if the shoulder falls off your shoulder? Okay. If the bust fits, if the bust is okay and the shoulders are too wide, you're going to take a big dart at center front. Dart at center front, it'll pull the shoulders in. I've done it many times on this tank top. It tapers to nothing at the hem. So the center front still is straight on the fold. 
but you're going to take a dart at the top and you usually have to do it in the front and the back and it will pull those shoulders in oh i didn't even know that well you really? didn't need it well i know but yeah. i may i may yeah so that's just the simplest way to do it how do you determine your starting size laura i'm going to let you take that one we go one. by bus we go by uh cup size no, that's not your circumference. You pick oh, your my circumference, circumference Oh, first. I measure. Of course, I measure around. But she also measured tops. From the my wardrobe that are store-bought tops. And I measured across the shoulders, I measured across the armholes, and I measured across the hips where I found out that I'm larger in the hips than I am in my bust, which is another reason my patterns never fit to my satisfaction. They fit, but not the way I like them because I had to have little boxes, which I had on last week. <laughs> And so that's a really important thing. Really the, mo the You just want to measure. And if you're doing a tank, if you have nothing in your wardrobe, then measure something to start. Or measure mm -hmm. you. Tanks don't... The reason I wanted to do this tank is because remember last time when we were on blouses? And blouses, you have to know your ease. Because blouses have to have mm -hmm. ease because they've got sleeves. So you don't have to know that in this case of a tank. So you look, could literally measure your bust and make that size. She ended up going up two inches. Her tank top is actually two inches right. larger than her full bust. Right. And two inches about, that just for my right. personal preference. That's right. right. There's no rule on that. Mm -hmm. Your personal preference, what you like, you get to be the, you get to be yeah. the decider. Right, especially on wovens. I mean, on knits, it's a different story. Knits is a different story, exactly right, good point. Hi, how to put the armhole and front notches in a way that, that an end result it matches if that's a pattern making question I'm not sure of that question but if it's a pattern making question we're, we're not going to teach you how to make the pattern we're going to teach you how to fit the pattern it's already been made all right mm -hmm. okay so length is okay in the front the other place you'll see length is in the back now do you have enough room yep yeah. this is what she wasn't happy with you can see I'm not going to pull it down. I'm not going to touch it. It's all this kind of wrinkles. Wrinkles. Perfect. It's all these wrinkles. She didn't like the wrinkles. So I'm futzing around with it and figuring out what to do. And it either has to be a length, a circumference, or a depth problem. So length, you can see that the wrinkles are kind of here, but not over here. They're not here. They're not on the side. They're in the middle. So that really is your red flag to tell you that it's a dart issue of some kind. It's not going to change by taking away circumference. I tried that. <laughs> it's not going to change by changing length. You can take the whole thing up or the whole thing down. So, and for most of you, I'm going to say that the depth is your weak spot. It's the what we know the least about. So I'm going to do a dart. And I'm going to say that she probably has a sway back. And so I'm going to take a greater amount out at center back until those wrinkles go away and then I'm just going to let the fabric do what it does and what it will do now this is harder to do on yourself as you see mm -hmm. Laura's head is facing that way and her back is facing this way okay <laughs> so what I'm going to tell you to do is if you are suspect it's a depth issue find the waist just put a pin above the waist. You don't ever want to change this at the waist. You want to change it above the waist so that the waist can fall where it should. And take um, a half inch darted center back, taper to nothing at the side. And then put it back on. And I'm going to tell you, this is a powerful little piece of information that you all need to know. Okay, and you don't even have to do it all the way, you, you can. But as long as you just fix the one side, you can see what a difference that makes. Yes. Are you okay, Stan? Mm -hmm. The dart you take in the center front or back, do you sew that or just make it invisible on the adjustment you make to the pattern? Well, you'll want to sew it so that it um, you can try it back on and make sure it's okay. But it's not in the final garment. You'll just take, like if this is mm -hmm. the pattern, this is where the dart is. It has to go all the way to the bottom, so you can see it's still going to be mm -hmm. a straight angle line, and it can still go straight on the fabric. It's just a different angle, and you can see what it does is it pulls in the width of the shoulders. That's all it does. Her dart is in a totally different place. Can you walk us through how it was moved? 
We did. Which dart? <clears throat> Is she talking about the back darts? I don't know. You always have to guess up. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're talking <laughs> her best dart or? Or the. It was uh, before. She asked the question before, so if you went over it, then. Okay. Lower, if it's the bus dart you're talking about, we lowered that. Three quarters of an inch. Right. If it's the back, there was no dart there. So we just created a dart now. It is a horizontal dart. And then she's going to show you that she did on the tissue. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show that? Oh, sure. <clears throat> um, here's my center back pattern. And here's the dart that Peggy took out starting here at the center back, cutting all the way to the side and tapering to nothing from uh, the, what, about quarter of an inch either way. And the next question, of course, I had is, well, this throws the center back seam. It, it curves in where she took the most out. And so I brought this so, bright red piece of paper, and we're going to show you how to fix that, because I've had a lot of questions on this. You're going to put this point right here and this point right there at the bottom on the fold. And you can see that mine's about a quarter of an inch right, right here. And so what you're going to do, let's put that a little bit closer so you can see it. Okay. is you can see right where we took that sway back it pulls away from this from the fold just a little bit you're going to fill that in it's no big deal it is a dart and so once you fix a pattern with a dart solution I can add circumference and it will not put the problem back they're two different things that's the whole thing that I've been trying to see all this time what I want is control. I want you to be able to control L, C, and D separately and not have to do one and have, you know. Right, and, and uh, I, in the past, not knowing this, I have been tempted to bring the pattern over. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to bring the pattern over and, and match where the where the gap is. Where the gap is, right. Well, that ruins the whole pattern because you have narrowed everything straight on down and um you lose circumference you, at the hips you lose yeah. circumference everywhere else. and i've got that problem already we don't want to add to it right okay so is everybody okay with that okay so now turn around to the back let's finish up the back what i wanted to talk her into <laughs> is the difference between having vertical darts and well that's this is l let's go in order okay let's go in order now we're going to do C. That was L. We're done with C. L. Now we're going to do C. And C was okay. Yeah. She had a little bit extra at the sides, yeah. and she liked that little bit. Yes. Yeah. And I, I lost a pin, so. No, I took it out oh, because okay. I need it for something else. <laughs> we're counting pins now. <laughs> no, okay, so I've got her pins over here. <laughs> All right, so um, so C is C. fine. C okay. is fine. So now we're going to do D, D, and we're going to start at the top and work our way down. So the very the first thing I did on her is she didn't like how far back that shoulder seam was. So I used that one inch she had here. I added to the back. I took away the front, just literally. And brought the shoulder seam forward. You have no sleeve. You have nothing to worry about. Don't panic. Bring the back forward because for her, I'm sorry. No. For her, this was kind of pulling. It just wasn't comfortable on her. Absolutely. Just wasn't comfortable. So now she, um, so watch the shoulder. There is no anatomical, I've told you this so many times, but there's no anatomical place that the shoulder seam lines up to on the body. People do the ear, people do, there's not, you know, none of that, none of that is true. I promise, none of it's true. However, I want the seam to be far enough forward to control the front and far enough back to control the back. If it's too far forward, I lose control in the front. If it's too far back, I lose control. I mean, I said that opposite, but you know what I mean. If, if the seam is too far forward and I try to pick it up, it won't fix the back. And if it's too far backwards, it won't fix the front. It needs to be at the top somewhere, it doesn't have to be exact, so that when I go to pick it up, it will control the gapping around the armhole the best it can. If there's more gapping, that's a dart issue. A bust dart issue, we'll go to that next. But the shoulder seam is a dart, it's a depth issue. And again, once I get where that armhole is supposed to be and how it's supposed to be, I can play that forward on every other pattern I go into. And what she has discovered is that she likes this better this than one. the blouse. I do. Okay, so that's where I say to you, you guys, it's gonna, you're constantly gonna be improving. You're gonna be finding and discovering things that you like better 
and then you'll implement those and then and it's through wearing it's it's through the doing is that mm -hmm. fair mm -hmm. you got to do it you got to do it you got to do it and okay. it's fun it really and is, it, fun. It is fun we've had a good time when grading do we look at the closest size down or the smallest size when grading you look at how much larger you need it to be and then go down the same number of inches so if the size is 40 and you need 44 then go down and find the number that's four inches smaller and grade to that amount okay when you take the shoulders in by using a dart on the front fold extending ending at the hem how do you decide how deep the dart is at the bust oh, okay. how do you decide how deep the dart is at like the how bust? much to take out from up here well that's it. because it, your shoulders wherever you want the pattern to be and you don't have to do it that way you guys you could grade this I mean you could just take a French curve and draw this in more and take your armhole device and pivot that out you're just moving the shoulder in is all you're doing the dart is just kind of a simpler way if it's too complex then you can just bring the shoulder line in redraw the neckline and then take the armhole and bring it in farther pivot it in at the shoulder seam to just move it in either way I think sometimes we focus so much on how to we don't get the big picture and the big picture is really more important because then the how to's are kind of easy right okay and like I said it's fun it is fun we've had yeah. a good time yeah Laura's a home run okay what next now um the well, bust and D. okay because see how this is kind of there's angular mm -hmm. wrinkles under her bust I want to fix that and I want to show you all that even if you don't see this stuff because I've heard people say I don't see that how do you see that well go down like start here the shoulder yeah. thing fix that see if there's anything wrong then go to the next thing and if you make the dart bigger and you like the way it looks then it needs to be bigger it's just really that simple it's not rocket science I may recognize it a little faster than you will but you'll get it so see that looks so much better than on her mm -hmm. and I don't know if y'all can see that but it really does and she liked it better when oh I was, much much better it's much more comfortable when I was draping it on her so that's why we decided to do it and, and that's why I took the pin out so that I could I could take excuses, the dart bigger. Excuses. So I could make the dart bigger. <laughs> and so I, excuse me, drew it in on the the uh, tissue, the way that it was pinned. Correct. So she took the dart, and then because the dart, when it becomes larger, she made the side seam shorter, she added to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Very good. And then she added to the bottom at the side, tapered to nothing, nothing. at center front. Mm -hmm. You don't add all the way at the bottom. You didn't, you didn't take it away. This is the only thing we changed. But you can see how much nicer that hangs now. It looks so nice. It's really getting there. There's one more thing I did, and I did it for her just if she wanted to. And what I did was I put in some vertical darts. Yes, that wasn't on the pattern, but I've kind of fallen in love with vertical darts. And I told her that they would make her look thinner. Anything for that. <laughs> And you know, we're women. If you tell me we're look thinner, we'll buy it. We'll do it. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Black. So, and on my, my final, I, I did do the darts. The only thing is, too, and you guys get to see the final. You can see that the, there's a couple reasons why they're good. Number one, they create verticals. So visually, they're vertical lines there. Once a dart is stitched, you can't see the size of it. So that looks terrific. Can you get this off your yeah. head? Yes. Okay, so that's what I warned her because sometimes when you do darts, the darts come in so much, depends on the difference of your bust and your waist, you can't get the top off. And so she still can. Now yeah. also I did darts in the back. I did in the back too. And again, you guys, there's rules with these darts. They're four inches from center back. Yes, I did do darts in the back and the front. Yada, yada, yada. They start right below the shoulder blade and they stop at the top of the hip. And so I drew those off in on a muslin, measuring from the center back and center front. Right, okay, so that's what we did on her first muslin. And then, what question, what are your notes? What questions um, did you have? Do you remember? Uh, well, actually, there was, besides the, these few changes Okay, the, done, the sway the, back. The sway back. She wasn't was sure how to place thing. the sway back on the fold, and we all know how to do that now. Yeah, so we've answered that question. We found out how where to place the vertical darts, okay. and I determined by pinching how deep they are. Believe me, mine are not very deep at the waistline. It, it starts out practically, well, it does start out nothing, and it goes almost less than a quarter of an inch yes but they're still so good you guys and yeah. i cannot as many times as i say it i just know you all will not listen to me 
But I'm going to tell you that if you'll just try it one time, you'll love it. We're yeah, going to let you go change. Yeah. She's got her muslin done. So then what she did is she proceeded to make up a tank top. And she had all kinds of ideas. She had all kinds of fabrics. I did give her a, a piece of fabric to do it with. And she made up this really cool tank top. Because I think once you gain the confidence that your fit is going to be there, you start playing with the fabrics, which is... Someone emailed me a while ago, and they said, quit worrying about the fit. Let's just all have fun. Well, I think we can have a lot more fun if we know it's going to fit. So that's why I'm, I keep <laughs> beating my head against the wall to get you all to try to get this fit thing, because then I think it opens up every avenue for you, and it is so much fun. It's so much fun to play. So she played, and I'm going to let her tell you how she played, because it's adorable. Is she cute? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Peggy gave me the black fabric, which is the blue and the black. And y'all saw that. We're, we don't have it on the side anymore, but we had it. Anyway, and it's a polyester, right? No, it's, it's, not a, it's, a, it's a rayon. Okay, it's a rayon. It's a rayon. And I happened to look at my stash because I never throw anything away. Uh, and did y'all hear that? I really That did. was a confession. Uh, that is a confession. <laughs> and and uh, when my husband says, oh, is that new fabric? Sometimes if it is new, I kind of say, well, you know, I had it for a while. <laughs> anyway, this was left over. Oh, the he's not watching, part. is he? Huh? He's not watching, No, I, I turned off all the, everything. He can't. I practically <laughs> pulled the plug from the electricity at our house. Because believe me, we've been without it with the roof, so it's nothing strange <laughs> <laughs> right now for us. Anyway, I called Peggy. I said, you're not going to believe what I have found. And I told her about the, the blue, and I cannot remember what it was left over from, but it combined the blue and the black and the white. So I decided, well, to be different, I didn't want uh, this neckline. So I V'd out the blue to angle so that the angle matched the shoulders and made it a little bit lower, <clears throat> and sewed it on top of the regular pattern, and then just cut the black and white behind. It's adorable. I wish y'all could see the original fabric. She brought me over the original fabric, yeah. and I mean, she did an amazing job. To me, this is fun. It's fun this when is really fun when you know at the end it's going to work out exactly how you planned it. It's I, like, wow, this is really cool. And so the the darts sewed in just great as we had marked them. And you don't and even see them. No, you don't. And you don't see it in the back. And so I plan to wear this with black pants, as I do now, it's adorable. or white pants. So it, it's it fits, and I have my pattern. Forever, I'm going to laminate this. <laughs> I kid you not. I'm going to laminate this and maybe put a copy in the safety deposit box for good measure. <laughs> okay. And it really and truly, y'all, it was. It's been fun, and I appreciate Peggy uh, even asking me to do this because I've learned an awful lot. Um, well, and I figured out I that y'all are learning more from her than you are from me. <laughs> no, no, no. That's so. not, that's not true. <laughs> Um, but uh, believe me, once you get your, your confidence in the patterns, which, as I have admitted to Peggy, I didn't have confidence, I mean, to speak of. I had no control, as she puts it. Uh, I did, you know, the luck of the draw. And talk about this one, because this one, oh. what she did is she added a, a dropped shoulder to it. And I've shown you all how to do that when you add that kimono sleeve. Because, again, now you've got a body that fits. Mm -hmm. You've got a sleeve from your 300. And so that's when she took and added it, and I, I love this, and I hope I'm not taking words out of her mouth, but no. she added the sleeve onto there, and then she went shopping. And you know what right. she went shopping for is, I'm going to pull this over. And this one is from some time ago, <clears throat> excuse me, does not have the vertical darts in it, which I intend to sew in as soon as I go home. But she went shopping for how mm -hmm. long she wanted this, how, you know, how big the armhole, you know, all of those things were style ideas that she got from shopping. Right. And that's when you, again, start to pull all these things together. People say to me all the time, I hate shopping. I think you're just not understanding why we're shopping or what we're shopping for. We're certainly not looking to buy anything. Uh -uh. You don't even have to try, well, I guess you have to try it on. Well, I'll try it You have to start to understand right. the styles that you like. Uh -huh. Okay, and what else did you want to say on your notes? Um, actually, uh, once you get the fit down and you get your confidence up and your control up, it's am it really is amazing because Actually, these tweaks that I'm calling them, none of them are over, except the bust, none of them are over a quarter of an inch. Yeah. And that, that, that makes a big, big difference. The I think that's line. a really good point. Yeah. It's amazing what a quarter of an inch will do. Right. It's not in the sewing that it will, it's in the angles. And I think that's what 
for the most of us, we don't necessarily understand is how those angles make a difference when it's a quarter of an inch. It mm -hmm. doesn't in circumference, but boy, it mm -hmm. does when it's in the shoulder and the angle feel. or the bust angle. The comfort of it. Because yes. normally if I put a V-neck on it, it gaps. You know, it just, it doesn't fit right. And Very can nice. I say just a word about, of course. The, oh, I made the little um, tiny pleat blouse, and th that is really comfortable too, and it's, on, it's in the same pattern. And I just measured my hips and pulled the fabric, uh, and the, I did narrow in the, the armholes because the bust was a little too big. But anyway, it was and that's easy. The, um, that's the other pleated top she's talking about. So that's there's a woven pattern. pattern and a knit pattern in that same pattern. Is her final top a knit? No, this is a woven. Mm -hmm. This is a woven. What are the rules for vertical darts? Oh, um, the difference from the center front and the center back? Four inches from center front. Four inches is pretty standard, but four inches from center front, center back. And then you just drape them in. Uh -huh. they, sh they'll go, they have to go into the bus circle, that's a rule. And then the length of them, it just depends. It doesn't, I, I there's not a real... see that or not. Yeah, I think they can. There's not a real fast rule on the length of them, but they have to go into the bus circle, in the front, and... Um, yeah, there's not a really hard rule on them. And, and just pinch in. Is, you know, pinch in where you want it to Yeah, that's the, the beauty of draping darts. I don't right. think I'd ever pre-sew them. I think that's just no. kind of almost a waste of exercise. And Except if you do it in the back, and you could guess in the back, and then see if they're right or not when you're doing what it on your sewing. numbers are on display? These are both 500. They're all 500. She right. just made the knit top in the 500 and the tank. She did both views. Right. There's two views in that pattern. Right. Is that, did we do good? I think we did good, if we answered all the questions. How can you make, make the, the back, back higher? You or extend center back straight up. Straight up, use your French curve and redraw. Extend that center back line. If you wanna, you know, whenever you ask higher, do you wanna make it higher, narrower? Like those are all words I interpret literally. So just kind of think about it all the way through. And think what you want to do when you're making when you're extending the shoulder seam in obviously the two will meet at some point that's called your head so you got to make sure you can get it over your head it's a tank top and there's no openings definition of a tank top is there's no openings on it so just be careful of that all right we're good okay so Laura's gonna have okay, a I'm gonna take press. Seat over here great job oh, well I love doing it thank you and this webcast was questions answers there's a few questions that I've been addressed and I want to ask them for you so again this was the um, top that we talked about you know she just made a comment that I want to comment on because she really did it you guys for all of you all like <laughs> thank yeah, you that's really because, and she said to me, if I could just help one person, I think she's helped more than one, what do you think? <laughs> I definitely think she's helped about 30,000. Anyway, at least 8,000. Okay, so I wanna show this in extreme, this sway back. This is exactly what Laura was talking about. And so this is the sway back. I'm gonna put, this is my, my red is my fabric behind it. And so this is where I add, the, and this, the top and the bottom are where I line it up onto the fabric. And you'll notice that there'll always be a gap where I took this way back. Don't worry about that. Just make it straight between the top and the bottom, fill in in between. If I do add some circumference here, I can always take it out in the darts. I could even take it out. I could curve the side seam a little bit more. We won't worry about that. Okay. Another question that came in is, if I lower a neck, there's a pattern making term called correcting the neckline. And when I do that, let me just use the same thing. When I take a neckline down X amount low, I don't have my tape here with me. Because there's a different angle that goes from the bust to the chest and from the bust to the shoulder, obviously to the chest, it's a much sharper angle than if the garment's gonna go all the way up. It's much more gradual if the garment's going to go all the way up to the shoulder than if it stops halfway in between. When we lower a neckline, there's a pattern making term called correcting the neckline. And so what we have to do is cut it and correct it. And we cut it to the bust start and we correct it. Once I lay my French curve on that and I know what that neckline is that will not gap on me, I don't have to ever correct it again. All I have to do is take that curve and transfer it from garment to garment to garment. And that will do it. So the question was, do I have to fix the neckline every time I lower it? 
The answer is no. All right, the next question I wanted to share with you was, as we've gone through and we've added to the back and we've taken away from the front, in a tank top, it's very easy, which is why I wanted to show you a tank top tonight. I think if you all will practice a tank top, there's no collars that attach to the neckline, there's no sleeves that attach to those armholes. It really helps build your confidence with just a few changes. Then when I go back to the blouse, and if I've changed the shoulder, I've added to the back and taken away from the front, I'm gonna show you how to change the sleeve. And I did a little diagram here where this is the back and this is the front. So I'm gonna make two slashes. The slashes are gonna go between the top of the sleeve and the notch, and I'm gonna cut all the way from the top of the cap, all the way to the bottom, and I'm gonna open up the back of the sleeve. And I'm gonna open up the back of the sleeve the same amount that I added to the back neckline. Okay, so there's my cut, and I did it in a different color so you could see that's where I'm adding in. Whatever amount I added to the back is the amount I add here. Then, the same amount, I take off the front. And you're not gonna be able to see this as well because you're overlapping the pattern and there's no color behind it. But there's the addition there, and then this is hinged because I cut it all the way to the bottom, I overlap the front. So just exactly the same numbers that I add to the back, take away from the front, I add to the back of the sleeve, take away from the back of the sleeve. You're gonna have a front and a back of the sleeve now, it's not a big deal. Just be aware that it moves the center and your hang point forward so the sleeve will hang better than what it did in the past. All right, easy enough? Okay, and again, once you've made that changes, you've only got two sleeves. You probably don't need to do that in a knit. You can if you want, but you've got, at most you've got three sleeves. You've got your knit sleeve, your blouse sleeve, and then your jacket sleeve. Okay, you can do it in each of those, then you're good to go. Okay, what other questions regarding the tank? When using your armhole cutout for each different armhole, I am changing armhole from tank top to jacket. How do you know where to place it on the pattern? Well, the armhole only goes between two points. It goes between the shoulder and the side seam. The side seam is predetermined because that's your circumference that you've chosen. The width of the shoulders is style. So if I put something on, I'm gonna use my top as an example my knit top, sorry Laura. I'm gonna get my tape measure. So if you put a top on and you put, put it on your body and literally take a tape measure, I guess I could have used my French curve. I'm so used to using tape measure. Put it on this seam and put it on this seam. And measure how far apart you like your shoulder seams. So I'm measuring 15 inches on myself. That's what I measure when I put it off. What I know is that's seven and a half inches from center front. So I can measure out seven and a half inches, and that's where I put the armhole template at the shoulder, and then I swing it to the side seam. So I already know the armhole is a fixed template. It can only go between two points, and if I know the shoulder seam, that's style, and if I know the side seam, that's circumference, that's it. Those are the only two places it can go between. Okay, easy enough? Mm -hmm. Laura says yes, it is. <laughs> Brett's saying yes, he understands. Yeah. And if Brett's the ultimate, <laughs> yes, he's the ultimate challenge judge here. <laughs> he gets it. We know the world understands it because he doesn't do patterns. Although we have lots of these discussions, and they're pretty funny discussions. But anyway, huh? Yeah, that's we do. He's so mathematical minded that that's why he's a really good um, consultant for this business because his mind works. He does puzzles. Absolutely. Is there any way to keep a knit sleeve from twisting? Well, the knit sleeve does not twist because it's a knit. That's kind of a, a, a wrong summation. A knit sleeve twists because it's a one-piece sleeve. Because a one-piece sleeve is straight and your arm is bent, every time you put a one-piece sleeve on, it's going to twist. It is acceptable and ready to wear for it to twist, usually because it's a knit, it's a silk, it's lightweight, um, manufacturers usually don't put in the time and energy to worry about a one-piece sleeve. If it bothers you crazy, then put in a two-piece sleeve. I've never seen a two-piece sleeve in a knit top. 
but it's your call. And to what degree it's driving you crazy? A two-piece sleeve bends at the elbow, and that's why it's twisting, is because your body is bending and the sleeve is not. The sleeve is straight. So it's your, it's your clothes, it's your goal. I just, I would get over the twist. Was that too crude? An elbow dart, if it was a woven. Would it elbow dart? You in? could put an elbow dart in. That's really yeah. old fashioned. Old fashioned. I mean, I hate to say that. Is that <laughs> I'm old. No, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen an elbow dart even in a knit. But, you know, I mean, those are all your, you know, the twist is normal because it's body versus, you know, pattern. And it's all what you decide you want to do. Understanding it is important because then you can decide what your answers are. Okay, so for a minute, I want to talk about the online pattern making class because we have just gotten so many questions. Um, and I want to explain or at least tell you what our thinking is so that you can be on board with this. 20 years ago, um, I really felt like it was important that we learn pattern making. I think it's important that all of us as sewer know the rules of patterns. That doesn't mean you need to. I just feel like it would be something that's going to be really helpful for you. So we're doing an online pattern making class. The questions that I've been asked that are concerning is, it's too expensive. No, it's not. Um, and please, if you think it's too expensive, just don't sign up. The price isn't going to change. We put lots of time and energy and thought into all of this before we did it. So that price is hard and fast and it's not going to change. Um, the other comment that's been very common is, and you compare us to all these other people out there, we don't do that. We don't usually compare us to other people out there. We just think it through. We think what's fair. We think what will give the best end result, and that's how we make our decisions. So we don't think leaving it up forever is the best, okay? It definitely gives you no urgency, no compulsion. Um, I'm going to be there to answer questions you have. I'm going to be there to help you with projects you need, and I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to be available forever. That's just not... <laughs> We can't do a class like that. We will, we structured it like a college class. It's gonna be available for four months, which is the end of December, and then it will go away. Um, you cannot take the files because the files are way too large. The filming we're doing is HD filming. It's, everything's being filmed new. It's not anything that we've done that we're putting up. They're all new filming, but the files are just too large. So they can't be downloaded. They'll be up and available for four months and then, and all the transcripts that, you, that you'll have a key to get into, that you can all print out. But again, once the four months is done, we start in October, we'll leave them up through the end of December. It'll, it'll not be there forever. And you can't ask me forever questions. I get a lot of pattern making questions. That's the reason I'm actually doing this class. So I'm always torn to not be able to answer you, but I can't answer the volume of pattern making questions that I get. Number one, I'm a pattern maker. We're a pattern company. We're here to help you fit. We're here to help you however we can and give you style options. But when you see a picture of what you want, we can't tell you how to go from point A to point B. We just can't do that. And I know you know that. I think sometimes you just don't think about it. So I just want to clarify, that's what the pattern making class will do for you. It will allow you to go from point A to point B and to work it backwards. You're allowed to do as many projects as you want. I'll help you on as many things as you want to do. But the operative word is help here. I will not give you the answer. I will tell you step A, step B, step C, okay? So I wanted to answer that. We've got a lot of wonderful response. We've got, the class is almost full, and I'm really excited about it. I'm very excited about it because this is something that I felt when I first started that everybody needed to know pattern making. And everybody said to me, no, we don't want to know pattern making. We just want to know how to fit. But I think what happens is we learn how to fit, then we gain our confidence and fit, and we naturally want to know more. Now we want to know the rules. Now we want to know what can I do and what I can I do. And so it is a, it's the perfect time to start teaching it, and it's we kind of based it on a college class. Um, it'll be available, and of course in college, once you leave the class, you can't come back the next semester or else, you know, you, you understand. Um, and so again, I hope that helps and answers the questions. We've got just a couple more minutes. Are there questions we can answer regarding the tank top tonight or anything else we've addressed? It's really been a lot of fun. Again, I cannot thank Laura enough, but thanks again, Laura. You're more Laura. welcome.
All right, do you make the same changes to the patterns for the pleated top and 500 as you do for the tank? You do not. And the reason you don't is because on the pleated tank, it has no bust darts. I built that into the pattern. Um, you only have to worry about circumference and you're gonna control any changes you need to make. Laura mentioned it, but what changes she made was you're gonna change the shoulder angle if you need to and you're gonna change the circumference. And those two things will take away and handle all your gapping. You won't have a problem besides that. It's also the tank top was made for a woven, the pleated top was made for a knit, so they're really two different animals in the same envelope, okay? Do you have the fabric for the muslin stock? We don't. I mean, it sells out so quick, you guys. I'm always looking for it. My fabric guys know that. They're always looking for it. The minute we get it, we put it back up, but we just don't, we don't have any right now. We'll get it again. I'm sure we will. And I go to New York the beginning of September, so I'll look for it then. Will you offer the pattern making class a second time? No plans at this time. We don't know. It's, um, we all, you know, we're just fine tuning, understanding what your needs are, what we want to do it. We do not want to be, I do not want to be a pattern making teacher. If I did, I would do that full time. But I do see the need that it is there. And I wanted to have an online class so that we could, so that I could actually help you on personal projects. Otherwise I can't. My time is just limited that I'm not able to. So this gives me an opportunity to kind of help you in those projects that you have and that you want to do okay okay so from all of us here laura brett myself we're gonna say thanks happy sewing from silhouette patterns and we'll see you in two weeks the pom for august is up check the website and we've got a new pattern little special too that i think you'll really enjoy thanks so much for watching happy sewing good night